People have been asking me, how do you remove a background in Final Cut Pro? Now there's a bunch of different ways that you can do this, and there's some really cool plugins out there that will do this for you. But in this video, I'm gonna show you the three built-in ways in Final Cut Pro that you can remove a background. Now over here in Final Cut Pro, I have three different video clips here. These are going to represent the three different ways that we can actually do this in Final Cut Pro. I also have this nice little background clip here of just kind of wavy blue lines. And every time we remove the background from one of these clips, we're gonna see this background behind them. So the first way that I'm gonna show you how to remove a background in Final Cut Pro is probably the way that you've seen done the most. This is the way that it's done in film and video and even on the Weather Channel. They're removing the background using a green screen. Now, the way that we're gonna do this in Final Cut Pro, we're gonna use something called the green screen keyer. So to show you this, I'm gonna add this clip to my scene. So I'm gonna make sure that my playhead is back at the beginning, click on that and hit the Q key. And that's gonna actually bring the clip in and connect it to my primary storyline. Now, I chose this particular clip for a reason. This clip does not have a perfect green screen behind it. It's actually got wrinkles in here, there's shadows, there's a seam going across the back of it. So this is not really the ideal green screen. But I wanna show you that the green screen keyer in Final Cut Pro can actually do a lot of the work for you. So what we need to do is we're just gonna click on the green screen keyer, we're gonna drop that onto our clip. Now you can already see that it's actually taken out the background completely. However, if you were to look really close, if we were to kind of scroll through this a little bit, you would see that there is kind of some of that seam and a little bit of kind of the changes in the color showing through on the image. So we can actually solve this problem really easily in Final Cut Pro. So I'm gonna go up here to our sample color option, and then we're just gonna actually select a range of color across the green screen. So if I just create a box here that's gonna go from the top to the bottom, it's gonna select all of the colors that are within this range that I'm selecting. And if you look really closely, you'll notice that as I do this box in a second, you'll notice that some of these colors get a little bit darker and brighter. The reason for that is as I'm going through and selecting the actual color range, it's basically cleaning up the green screen behind it so it's becoming more transparent. So watch as I do this and you'll see these colors kind of get a little darker. So I'm gonna select my range from here all the way down to the bottom. And basically what that's gonna do is it's gonna select every shade of green within that range. So basically what's happening here is instead of taking out just one shade of green, it's ultimately taking out every shade of green that's in that range that we just selected. So this sample color option here allows us to have a little bit more nuance in our green screen. It allows for more error which is super useful when you don't have a really high budget and you can't perfectly light a green screen. A tool like this that allows you to basically choose a range of green colors is going to make this a lot easier. Now there's a bunch of extra features in here that allow you to kind of improve the matte or refine the actual compositing, but we're not gonna need to use them in this case because most of the time, as long as your green screen is done decently, then this tool is going to remove the green screen completely. And so this is kind of the primary way that a lot of people like to remove a background in Final Cut Pro. However, you don't always have access to a green screen. And most of the time, you're not recording with a green screen anyway. Now, the downside to using a green screen is that it's a process, right? It's a process to set it up. It's a process to light it, to get it to look well enough that it's actually going to chroma key out those colors. It's a difficult process. So there are times when you just want to be able to record your video and then cut your actual image out of the background. And so this next example is one way that we can do that. There's a tool down here in your effects, and again, it's in the masks and keying. That tool is called the scene removal mask. And basically what we can do is we can apply this to a video clip. Now I'm gonna use this video clip right here. I'm gonna put my playhead there and hit the Q key, and that's just gonna drop this video clip in after that other one. I'm just gonna drop the audio off of that because we don't need it. And whenever you use the scene removal mask, you have to have a portion of the clip that is just the background. You can't have your subject in the whole time. So in this clip, I was basically leaving just the background. And you can see there's a little portion there where my shoulder pops in. So I'm gonna kind of go past that. I'm gonna hold down the option key and hit the square bracket on the left, just to trim that back a little bit. And I'll pull this over here. 
And so basically what I have now is a little bit of this clip is just the background, okay? And then at some point I kind of step in there and I start acting like a goofball, but you have to have a portion where there is no subject in the scene and it's just the background. Because the AI that's being used in the scene removal tool ultimately is going to take this background, it's going to analyze the background, and then it's going to determine any other things that come into the scene are no longer background. So it needs to know what was the original background to begin with. And so all we have to do now is we have to actually apply the scene removal mask. So we're gonna drop that onto our clip. And then up here in the options for that, basically you're just choosing what is the reference. So the reference in our case is going to be the first frame. So like right about here, where there is no actual subject in the scene, I want the first frame to be my reference. You also have the option to do first frame plus a second, and this is useful if like your background is changing or moving or something like that. You want to analyze actually the first frame and the first second instead of just the first frame. But in this case, it's a still image, the background is still, it's not moving, it's on a tripod. So using the first frame as your reference is usually ideal in that case. Now, one thing you're gonna notice with the scene removal tool is as we kind of move through this it's a little bit wonky like there are definitely times where it doesn't get it right and you can see over here where it's kind of like cutting a piece of me off like that the scene removal tool is just not as good as I want it to be okay it's a little bit finicky and you have to get things just perfect and the lighting perfect and the background can't be too chaotic and there's there's a lot of factors that go into the scene removal tool that give it a lot of room for error so it's not my favorite way to remove a background in Final Cut Pro. I think that the scene removal tool was ultimately kind of the precursor to the magnetic mask. It was, it was an effect that was available for us because people were requesting the ability to remove a background and it uses AI to make this determination, but it's not as refined and good as the magnetic mask. So there's issues with it and I don't think that it does as good of a job as I want it to. So for me, the scene removal mask is kind of my last resort if I'm gonna do this. Most of the time, I'm either gonna use the green screen keyer or if I don't wanna do a green screen at all, I'm gonna use the magnetic mask. So let me show you now how to use the magnetic mask to remove the background as well. Now the magnetic mask, I'm just gonna click on this video clip up here and I'm going to hit the Q key so that we can drop that on top of our background. And over here, I kinda of wanna find a frame where he's completely in the frame this guy over here is in the frame because I want to make sure that the magnetic mask does not select any of this guy, but only selects this dude right here, okay? So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that clip right there. I'm going to hit Option Command M, and that's going to add a magnetic mask to this clip for me. And so now what I need to do is just select my subject. So make sure it selects all of the different parts of him. I'm going to select his hand, but I do not want it to select this guy over here. So I'm going to hold down the option key and I'm just going to make sure that I put some negative spots on here. So it knows not to select that guy, but it's only selecting this guy right here. Okay. And all we have to do now, as you've seen a million times, whenever we do anything with the magnetic mask, we just have to analyze this. So we'll do the analysis and then we'll talk about it on the other side. And if you're wondering at all why it's been a couple of weeks since I posted on YouTube, it was because I was on vacation. My family and I went to St. Augustine, Florida. It's a really cool city. If you haven't checked out St. Augustine, we've been there before, but we enjoyed St. Augustine a lot. And so we decided to go back. My wife and daughter were on spring break. So we went to hang out and check out the city. It's a great city, great restaurants, great people. It's just a really cool vibe. So if you're not from the United States or you don't live in the United States, and you're visiting, it's definitely a cool city to check out. And of course, if you live here and you've never been, you should absolutely go check it out. Just a cool city and it's a fun little getaway. Okay, and now that we have this analyzed, all we have to do is go up here and click done and boom, the background is gone. It's that easy. The magnetic mask is my favorite way to do this. I think that the green screen keyer and the magnetic mask both have their place. I think that when you're working in a situation where you have a green screen or a blue screen, or you just have a single color in the background, then the chroma keyer might actually be a better way to go, or the green screen keyer. That might be the better way to go in this situation. When you are just dealing with regular video that doesn't have a single color in the background, then the magnetic mask is ultimately going to be your best bet. 
And now we can actually go in and refine this a little bit because you can see that the edge is a little bit too thick and dark here. So you can go in and you can just kind of feather this backwards a little bit so that it doesn't look like it's as perfect and as dark a line. And then if you just kind of like scroll through this, our character now has been cut out and he looks amazing. The background is just there. He's just cut out and the background is gone. So these three methods are the ways that we have in Final Cut Pro to natively remove a background. Now I'm going to render all three of these out and let's look at how each one comes out in the end. And that's all there is to it. You have three different ways in Final Cut Pro that you can remove a background. We can use the green screen keyer to remove any kind of like single color or similar color in the background. We have the scene removal mask, but it's a little bit finicky and it doesn't really work the way that I think that it should, as good as I think it should. But we also have the magnetic mask that can very accurately select a subject and can very accurately mask that subject out and get rid of the background. So in my mind, I think it's kind of a tie between the green screen keyer and the magnetic mask. The green screen keyer works best for situations where you have like a single or solid color in the background. The magnetic mask is gonna work best when you have a situation where there's more happening in the background and more business in the background and you just want to cut out a specific subject but either way those two options I think are the best in Final Cut Pro the scene removal mask leaves a lot to be desired it's not my favorite thing I wanted to let you know that it was there so you can experiment with it see if you get better results but for me the magnetic mask and the green screen here are the best ways to be able to actually remove a background now, like I said in the beginning of the video, there's lots of plugins out there that can do this for you too. Now, an example of that would be like Mroto AI. I've got a link for that down in the description. That's a plugin created by Motion VFX, and I will actually create a video that's all about that specific plugin in the future. But for now, these are the tools that you have within Final Cut Pro to be able to remove a background. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure that you like the video and subscribe to the channel. And also make sure that you click the notification bell so you get notifications anytime I create a new video. As always, thanks so much for watching the video. And if you enjoyed this video, then you should definitely check out that one.